Hello my friends, Yossi here. Today we're going to talk about should we still be investing in Toronto's real estate market in 2019 and in the end of this video I'm going to give you my exact prediction to what's going to happen to Toronto real estate market with percentages, with exact numbers the way I see it. So stick around, this is going to be a jam-packed video. Let's go. Let's start first with my Twitter, twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. This is where I post all the things that you know, if it's really fast or I see something interesting that I like and caught my attention, I'm going to post it right here. It's quick to do it. I can do it from my phone and I don't need to send an email or post it on the website. And this is all public, by the way, okay? So go to twitter.com slash Yossi Kaplan. Follow me here for all the quick updates. Now we're going to go to my website, Toronto, uh, uh, urbanrealtytoronto.com. And this is where I put all my Toronto listings and some outside of Toronto, okay? Is Toronto a good place to invest in 2019 and what's the market prediction that I will give you, my own Yossi's market prediction for 2019, okay? So let's summarize 2018 was an amazing year. Uh, at the end of the year, we see the rise of the junction and the rise of Queen East. These are the two main areas that really been pushing, okay? And you can see developers, that's where they're coming up with. And of course, King West is always strong. Uh, 543 Richmond is the newest addition, plus the King West addition, the big King West, okay? Um, and lots and lots of projects, so many projects happening. I love to see a lot of new projects, boutique projects, and all that. And, you know, the prices right now are going like this. If you look at uh, Queen West, you know, resale, about a 1,000 a foot. Queen East, about a 1,000 a foot for the resale. And the new construction is actually topping the 1,000 in the main areas, but you can still get Stockyard uh, for less than a 1,000, less than 900. Junction already up on a 1,000. Uh, if you want to see all the Junction condos, go here. Queen East got a special right now if you want. Uh, it's, it's less than a 1,000 a foot with parking. Beautiful building by Harhey Developments. Uh, East Junction, good prices. Uh, Richmond West, good prices, but pick the right unit. Don't buy the bottom unit, not looking at you know the alleyway. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't spend a $1,000 a foot on that. You got to spend your $1,000 a foot and get the most you can. Okay, Avenue Road, resale, all the... Uh, Old favorite, Axiom, and so on and so on and so forth. 151, uh, 159 Wellesley. We have some great assignments there. Post lofts almost sold out. We sold the three units that I redesigned. They used to be called Hills. Now they're Brooklyn. They're redesigned. They're sold. I got a couple units left there and a few others. Scouts, still a couple units left. Really, really good prices. But the question is what happened in 2018 and what will happen in 2019? So it goes like this. Let's jump here. And the first thing I want to show you is when you go to condos.ca, you can punch in some numbers. And here I brought Fashion House. You know I love Fashion House. And look at what's going on in Fashion House according to condos.ca. And that's pretty good information. So the average price in the building is $993, 1000 bucks a foot. It's the 72nd highest price building in downtown. So it's not the most expensive. It's on the top 100, but, you know, at the bottom bottom uh, quarter. Um, it's more expensive than the rest of King West. That means a lot of these uh, buildings... Um, which are, you know, 71 and, and up um, are not King West. Interesting, right? Uh, the other thing is we've seen that in the last year, over year, I guess that's rolling 12 months, 17.4%. And what's going to give you here is here's the building and here's uh, King West and it's more or less following together. And look what happened here. In 2016, you know, we're, I was buying here at 500 bucks a foot, actually slightly before, less than 500 when the building launched. Um, I was telling everyone buy at Fashion House. We probably did about a dozen sales here. Whoever sold it really, really well because we were paying you know, 500 bucks a foot or less. We got the keys uh, four and a half years ago. So we doubled the money very quickly. And don't forget, we more than doubled the money because we doubled the value of the condo. But you know, if you only put 15 or 20% down and you double the entire 100, you've done you know six times more your deposit or more. Okay, so here, when it came on the market, it's already coming like around 600 a foot, uh, 626, okay, that's not too bad, 5%, and here we got 9%, 682, and look at this, look what happens in 20, uh, 2017, he sees an increase of just almost 24%, and that's accurate for King West and the Fashion House. And the next year, um, Fashion House is doing slightly better, but King West is still doing really good, 13.5%, 13, 13 and Fashion House does 4% more. Okay, condo fees. I think there's a new management company here that is better. So that's that's a clue. Uh, I opened a couple more. Here's Bohemian Embassy, and the reason I picked these buildings is because they're known buildings. They're really um, 
and, and they kind of uh, they're known. And both these buildings have about you know 350 units, so they're about the same size, um, which is good. So this one here, um, I'm at 853 a foot, which is phenomenal. You know, I we were buying here at 350 a foot, and then that building sat vacant. Uh, you know, it wasn't built for six months, and the new owner came and finished it real good actually. And it's the 36th most expensive building. So relatively at the west end, so relatively doing really great. Okay, and it's around the same. Uh, so it's doing great in comparison, and it's more or less in line with everything else. Uh, the increase, the recent increase was for eight and a half. And look at here, same thing. Okay, here the, it's kind of just going along, going along, not really happening anything because it took a long time for the building to come up. And then, boom, 30% increase in 26. For 2017 what the hell 30 percent so this building caught up to values he didn't do it before suddenly everybody discovered uh, queen west and suddenly people say oh it's legit to live in queen west so why don't i buy queen west okay i've been telling you guys buy queen west buy i've, I've been buying king west 15 years ago and queen west 10 years ago you have to be ahead of the curve okay to get these numbers and here 16 percent 0.6 this is still crazy my friends this is really really high and here is let's go downtown, Shangri-La, lovely place. Okay, 23rd uh, most expensive uh, building in the core, so quite up there, 1150 a foot. Mind you, you know, Yorkville will be on top and much higher. And look, it's 22.3% more expensive than the core, and it got about 7% this year, okay? So here, look at this. So it's been like muddling along, muddling along, peddling along, because you remember Shangri-La came out of very high prices, and then it was hard for the resellers to flip it. And one of the reasons it was hard for the resellers to flip Shangri-La is because Shangri-La has a lot of not-so-great units. You heard me say that. I'll say it again. Not all the units of Shangri-La are good. Some of them are not very good, and they take a long time to sell, and they don't sell for full value. That's why it brings the value down. If the Shangri-La was designed properly, and say instead of 10% of the units are great, 20 or 30 or 50 or 80 percent great units and there are developers who know how to do this you know you will see a lot higher prices and obviously anything else that this developer does you'd run you rush to buy because they're perfect nonetheless look at this 16 percent up here and uh six percent here and it's doing really good also don't forget because it's so high up on the list it may show slightly slower gains because these numbers you know when you multiply them uh they come to easily a million dollar per unit so the, these are these are the factors, okay? So you understand what's going on here is what I'm showing you that the value, if you buy correctly, the value will jump up like crazy, okay? And that's why, <laughs> I don't know if I'm lucky or smart, but I've been able to recommend you the best buildings to buy year over year over year. Now, I'm not the kind of guy who just, you know, blast you off with every kind of building. I'm very, very picky, and I like to be picky, but I think because I think that's what investors need to do. They need to be picky. They need to think about what they buy, and they need to look at what they're going to do, and they need to act accordingly, okay? So don't be that investor that rushes and buys whatever because you got an email from someone you don't know or because, you know, your friend bought there. And then you just don't know all the information. You don't have all the deals. You don't have all the information. And you just don't know what to do with it. So you rush and you buy. And you get into this buy. And like, oh, yeah, yeah, everybody bought their ID too. Well, you know, maybe the floor plans were not that great. Maybe the ceiling height was low. And then someone comes to see it. I've seen some units, my friends, that, you know, like asking for $500,000. I couldn't get mice to live in there because the design is so crappy. I'll say it again. Some of these units in town, the developers are building are so bad they're so ill-designed that you cannot live there, okay? It's the worst investment ever. But in the same building, you'll see, also see some good units. What you want to do is you want to pick a good unit in a building that has a lot of good units, not a good unit in a building of crappy units because the overall value of the building will come down, the value of the building will come down. It's not going to attract the right people, okay? And there's so many of these now. I will never, ever speak publicly in saying this is bad because none of them are bad, but there are better ones. And that's how I like to see it. Okay, some are better than the rest, and those are we focus on. So that's why you need an agent like me. Call Yossi Kaplan, go right here, give me a shout, ask me, is this a good investment? Can you help me out? I will help you out, even if you have an agent. A lot of people call me, I already have an agent, but I want to hear your opinion because you have all these videos. Well, 
Okay, well, why did you pick that agent? I don't know. They're my cousins. Well, maybe they should do their homework first, okay? Anyway, here's what it is. Now we're going to dive even deeper, and I'm going to explain to you what's going to happen in 2019, because 2019 is going to be a crucial, crucial year for Toronto's real estate, okay? So first, let's look what the media has to tell us. Now, remember, all media is fake media. I say it again. All media is fake media. What does that mean? That means that they have their own owners, right? And the owners have their ideas. Maybe they're collaborating with someone. Maybe they collaborate with larger bodies. Maybe they need to send someone else's message. You never know what's going on behind and why you're seeing these posts and not other. So thank God for social media to allow us to find other information, but also remember all the information you find, not only on social media, everywhere, I consider fake. The only thing I believe is the numbers and the number I see. It's the only thing I believe. And if you don't know how to look at the numbers, give me a call and I'll show you. Even on the phone, we'll just screen share and I'll show you. But there's some good information here and I want to show you this, okay? So why you need to change lenders? Okay, so here they read, they, they, and you don't really need to read the articles if you know how to read the title. Uh, although a lot of them, you know, will, will take you on a, on a ride. But here you go. You, because the mortgage, the prices are expensive, so they're telling you to try to get a better deal, okay? And here they're telling you that we have shortage of units, which is the key, key thing here. Canada not building apartments fast enough to keep up with demand, okay? We need more beds. I've been saying it forever. The Canada needs a million beds. One million beds are required in Canada. In Ontario, probably could take quarter million easy. And then we'll spread the rest around the country, okay? Uh, what else we got here? So there's, there's like, for example, this here, Jody Dent reminds me of Dent from uh, Batman. <laughs> Doug, for, and remember, he was a double-faced guy. Uh, Doug Ford's plan to end rent control is flashback to 20. He didn't end rent control. He just said all the new units will not have rent control. He actually didn't end it. And, you know, I don't vote it for this guy. I don't really care what the face is there. It doesn't matter. But what matters is to read the news properly, and you know, this is not right, okay? So da 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 and you know, you, you, you're going to see in the same page, in the same paper, information that tells you market going up, and then you see the information market going down, okay? But basically what's happening in Toronto, in Toronto 2019, that everyone wants to live in Toronto because the jobs are here. So if the jobs are here, we need more beds, and if we need more beds and we have no room, and we're not building fast enough, the price is going to go up, Okay? Now, the other thing, of course, is the interest rates. You know, if the interest rates are going to go up because the government wants to make more money, because the feds want to make more money off the government and on us, they push the interest rates up. They're going to make a few billions every time they push the interest rate by even a sliver. They make billions and billions because, you know, the loans are so large, half a million loans, million dollar loans, and there are hundreds and thousands of these loans, and they make a lot of money. But how is it going to affect us? Take a look. Time to relax mortgage regulations. Canada home builders urge, okay? So the home builder is starting to feel the stress. Hey, it's too expensive, or, you know, and I know a lot of developers, my friends, okay? A lot of these deals I send you because developers call me and say, hey, I got a couple units to sell here. I got a couple units to sell here. I got a new building, you know, like bring your investors, bring your buyers, and that's what we do. And that's when I send the private email to my news list and I tell you guys, guys, come in. This is, this is Toronto's best kept secrets. I cannot put on Twitter. I cannot put on my website but I will tell you on the email. So if you're not getting the email, you're not getting the full picture. Okay, so get on that email. Just go to the newsletter right here and sign up. So I'm going to go back here and I'm going to show you, okay? Um, okay, this is a good one here. Housing lottery with 50 to 1 odds reveals dark side of Toronto boom. Okay, now obviously the star, you know, they have to sell subscriptions because now they close the star. So they got to make their subject uh, and the title is like bombastic uh, but really what he says is there's no not enough beds okay um, there's no there's no purposely built apartment uh, rental buildings very very few if any and they, they, they don't make a dent okay so that's what's happening moving to suburb rarely saves cash well if you have to drive but you know what's going to happen right now Everyone's moving to Brantford, everyone's moving to Hamilton, everyone moving to Guelph, Kitchener-Waterloo, Mississauga, Oakville, you know, that's where people are going. A lot of my friends, and I've said it before, are moving to these areas because, you know, we're the age where everyone has kids and we want a good place and we don't want to be like in a downtown core. We can leave it to the 
millennials who come for the jobs, they just came out of university and they get the jobs and, and they don't mind living in a 400 square foot condo. And they're making 60, 80, and 100,000 dollars right out of university and one of them or two of them together can afford the condo. And don't forget, when you look at the rents for condo, yes, it's 2200 for one bedroom da uh, downtown, but guess what? It doesn't cost less to the owner to, to pay for the mortgage, condo fee, and taxes. So that's what it is. It's like it's not, it's not going to come down. But the question is, will it come up and how soon? And I will, I will get to it at the end of the video. I'm going to give you exact numbers, okay? A few more things to consider before we go this, okay? So uh, sales, one, October 1.6, okay, that's fine. That's like all over Canada. But when we focus on the GTA, you know, the, the picture is different. Condos alone withstood housing correction, okay? <laughs> You know, 20 years ago when I came to Toronto, people said, oh, the houses, the houses, the condos are bad. Now, it's gone. If you're still complaining about houses at the ages, like 90% condos and 10% houses, you're just out of the picture, okay? So go educate yourself and come back, understand that condo is, the, is how we're going to live from now and forever. And I grew up in Tel Aviv, but everyone lives in an apartment because there's just not enough land. It's a tiny, tiny country and lots of people. And it's very, very busy there and it's very, very expensive. Okay, so apartment is the way to go, and you know, in Canada, apartment is a, is a rental owned by the company, and condo is owned by individual usually, and, and the way it's settled. But for, for all intents and purposes, uh, you look here, the, the word apartment or condo, it's almost interchangeable. Uh, new condo prices soar, single family home price fall in September. What does it mean? It just means that we don't have enough, um, the, the, the single family home went up so fast that it hit a point where people say, okay, wait a second, that's so expensive, I can barely afford it. If I had to live in there, it's going to be too expensive. If I have to have some tenants in, you know, I'm not going to make it back. So people are buying condos. Also, the reason people are buying condos is because they want to buy new construction. Because new construction, you know, every year, the buildings are better and the quality is better and the finishes are better. And developers find ways to make them better. Except for the one big mistake, of course, which is the crappy floor plans. And I'm going to make a whole video about crappy floor plans and why you should never buy them. And why you should realize that 80% of all units in buildings, sometimes 90%, are really bad floor plans. But today I'm going to focus on 2019 real estate prediction for Toronto. Okay, so on and on and on. Uh, I'm, I think I'm done with this page. But, you know, you can, see, you can see it for yourself. And just remember that whatever media you're looking at, it's all fake, okay? And what I mean in all fake, they all have their intent and purpose and kind of a backdoor idea why they want to feed you that information. So don't believe the hype. Believe your eyes and believe the numbers, okay? And do not pay for subscription for Toronto Star. Do not pay for subscription for anything unless they really give you like actual real hard numbers that you can make money on. The only thing I'm going to pay for is somebody's going to give me a report that helps me to make a better investment. And I do pay for these things. Okay, and then you get the benefit of seeing what I got. But I will not pay for, you know, this thing that one page tell me one thing and the other tell me another. It just doesn't make any sense. Okay, um, I want to, let's go to Market Watch. I reviewed this Market Watch from October. Uh, December will come this week but good enough for me to show you what's going on. So let's look here at the top right at, at uh, TREB MLS sales activity. So TREB covers Toronto, Toronto Real Estate Board, and it shows you, and this is kind of from right to left, <laughs> but it shows you October 2017, we have 7,100 sales, and here we have 7,500, so about 400 sales more in October. So this is great. Why? Because it means that the market is, is, is active, and second, don't forget, every year we add some units. We add ten or 20,000 units. So, you know, it makes sense that there'll be more sales every year. Okay? Now, we may add only 1% or 2% more, but here we added about 8% more sales. So, it's, it's really, really good. Okay? And you can see here, I did this numbers in my head. The average number is about 6% here change, uh, slightly less new listing, more active listing, and so on. And here at the bottom, this is really cool you can actually see the averages right on the first page. You don't have to go through all this. And just look here. Sales and average price. Okay, so how to read this. Detached homes in the 416, 882 sold, uh, 24, 46 in 905, and total 3,200. The average price in the 416 was 1.3 million. That's why the price is slowing down because it's high. 905 is 400,000 less, and, and the total is a million bucks for a house. And semi is about 20% less. 
and the townhouse even slightly less and townhouses you know i love them i think they're phenomenal investment i really love townhouses and i got a lot of townhouses for sale right now if you're looking at townhouses and you know they'll they'll be between six hundred thousand and two million if there's something that attract attractive to you i think it's very, very attractive for investors these days definitely look into it and give me a call and i'll tell you which, which the best ones are okay and year over year percentage change so detached came up by 10 percent in 905 at uh, 416 and 6 in the 905 so that's pretty good and the semi 17 why because the price is lower so it goes up by more uh the condos are in the resale stable 905 went a huge huge jump okay but the average price in the 416 still went up by 8 or 6 percent so the the numbers i've showed you earlier here 8 or 6 percent uh this one 13 5 this one 16 This one's 6.9. So you can see the expensive ones are slowing down because they're so expensive already. But the affordable ones and the well-located ones and the ones with the good floor plans and the good designs, uh, the ones I show you are, are doing great. They are doing great. So as an investor, you have 9 out of 10 chances to pick a shitty unit. And only 1 out of 10, actually less, I think, to pick a good unit. Okay? So get a professional to help you with that because it's it's going to save you or make you hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. Okay, moving on. I want to show you one more thing. Let's go to yossi.searchrealty.co. And all this information I'm, I'm dumping on you and I'm showing you and I'm sharing with you is things that I've learned the last uh, nearly 20 years of living in this town and working in this business and coming from a real estate and construction family. So when you go to yossi.searchrealty.co, that goes through uh, an, uh, a company that processes the information and presents it. And right now, let's look at Toronto C1, which is the downtown core. There she goes. And that goes from Young Street west to Dufferin and from the water up to Bloor. Okay, so I'm going to hit that. I'm going to put one bath just to skip uh, anything that came in, like a lock or a parking, anything that kind of... Okay. And we're just going to look here and see what we can find. All right. So it, there's a lot of listings right now, which is great. And here you get the Toronto market report for the area. So when you do this, you will get the market report for the area. And you can see exactly what's going on. So now we're going to re review the market report for the area. Now, this is a snapshot. Okay. So before I showed you historical numbers. Now I'm showing you like a live snapshot. So when you come back to this page every day, this will change obviously with so many listings it takes a few more days to change because you know if it's averaging 1600 uh, uh, listings or even more thousands of listings you know every listing moves the average just a tiny tiny bit so it takes a week or a month to change but there we go so and this will include all the properties so the average price in C in C1 in downtown core is a million buck okay and it's calculating over 1112 homes and the median price, half of the houses are more, or condos, and half are less, is $750. So 50% chance, more or less, that $750 is your price. That's what you're looking at these days. That's an average. And for that, you'll get uh, almost two beds and almost two baths, okay, in the home. And the bedroom, you can see, and that makes sense. That gives you, you know, just below two bedrooms, okay? And don't forget that the, these prices will pull the numbers up because of the, the heavy hitters, the big homes will push the numbers up but at the same time we have a lot of condos with slightly lower prices that's where the average is so far from the median okay that was a stats class sometime ago <laughs> and if you want to drill down you can see here it gives you some ideas month by month and all that stuff that's really cool and you can see that we have a monthly movement of one or two percent on average okay that's where we get into the 10 to 15 percent a year uh, recent okay so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go back here and I'm going to show you a few more things, okay? So first of all, we're going to do a quick review of what's going on here and then I'm going to get to the juice like I promised you, what is going on in the market and how much I think the Toronto market is going to appreciate or depreciate in 2019 and should you still invest in Toronto real estate market in 2019 and if not, where should you put your money, okay? So before I get that, I want to do one more thing, which is to review the downtown core because I think the understanding the downtown core is the key to your success as an investor. And I'm sharing with you the information I received from so many people I've worked with, uh, with and for, you know, the clients that always teach me, every client I've had taught me so much. Thank you, everyone.
I really appreciate you. So here we sorted by the highest price, and you can see uh, the highest price in the system right now is 725. According to the filters I said, they're highest, even higher priced units, but I set some filters here, and you can see the pictures are a little murky, but this is 16 Harbor, and it's like a beautiful large unit, and obviously this will take a bit of time to sell. It's a unique unit, it's a giant, giant space, three beds and five baths. That'll be a nice party in there, right? Okay. Now, when I go back, uh, here's the back of King West. That's a penthouse. Been, this one has been on for a while, actually, but it's a really nice unit with a pool facing south. And if you want like a swanky bachelor pad, that's the one to pick, okay? It's it's beautiful space. And it does have a pool in there. But, uh, outside. I don't know if there's pictures of it. There it is. So that's a private pool. That's what you're paying $7 million for, for the view and for the pool. And because you own 4,000 square feet uh, of the unit and over 2,000 square feet outdoors, that's your jacuzzi. That will make a good party. Okay. Now, let's look at what the average. Let's look at what, like, you know, like mom and papa buying, okay? And you can see here, there's uh, we got 290 Adelaide. Uh, we got uh, 468 Wellington, $6.7 million. That's a giant, giant. That's another uh, penthouse just down the street from here. These are nice places, my friends, okay? Obviously, these will take a little longer to sell. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Nonetheless, uh, and this is, this, is, this is an old building, one floor, by the way, okay, with, with a bit of a nook on the top. So these exist, and it's nice to look at the highest price. Let's look at the latest listing. So what came on the market recently? Okay, um, I'm going to ignore the rentals, uh, but look here, 719, 719, a million, half a million Bohemian. Hey, half a million Bohemian, that's pretty good. That's hard to get. Uh, 4441, and on and on and on. Okay, 18, 458, these are good prices. If I look at the cheapest, the lowest prices in, in the city right now, uh, and I can go to the filter here, see what I'll do is I'll put the minimum prices at uh, 300, there's nothing really under 4 or something, but just, just to weed out uh, uh, those rentals, that's commercial. So I can I can also filter here. You can do it once you log in. Call an apartment. So townhouse. Go back here. Okay. So King West 350, Peter 369, 389, 395, and boom. There's only five units, six units left on the 400, and then we immediately the 400 range. And what you get for that? You get bachelors. You get bachelors which could be great, you know, those bachelors could actually be really good because the rent is still pretty high on them, so they, if you divide by rent but the, but the price you pay for the unit, you get a pretty high number, which is good. This is one of the measure, measures that I teach my investors to use to see if it's a viable investment. And especially if you're going to buy a condo in Toronto in 2019, you want to see if it's a viable investment, so divide the rent that you get by the price, and that's going to give you kind of a, like a general measure to see where you stand, okay? Obviously, the less amount of rent you need to pay for the unit, the higher your return. Okay, so that's how it goes. And then you can choose uh, any any other any other way you want to look at it. But here's the thing, my friends. Okay, now I'm going to get to the actual numbers. Now, if I weed out these seven million dollar units, and I really let's look at let's look at your our bread and butter units, which are half a million to a million units. One, two, three, four, five, six zeros. Okay, search. And at least one bath. Okay, what do I get? Uh, over 333 units. Let's see what latest listings are. Okay, from 500 to a million. Seven, seven, nine, five, five, six, almost eight, five, eight, almost nine, five, and so on she goes. So the prices are coming up and up and up. By far the highest prices we've ever seen. Can they stay? Okay. So here's what I think, my friends, okay? What I think, and look, at, this is going to give us all the million-dollar units and below, okay? So you can see, and a lot of them are priced in 999 so if somebody searches for a million, they will show in the, in the search. That's why they do it, okay? That's good. So here's what I think. I think like this. There is an insatiable demand for units in Toronto because we don't have enough beds. It's not like people going and just buying condos because they're going to make money. It doesn't work like that. 
You know, you got to buy the right building. You got to buy the right floor plan. Most of you, my friends, are not buying the right floor plans. I know. How would I know it? Because 90% of the floor plans are not good. So 90% of you are not buying the right floor plan because I wouldn't. But if you want, you want, send me an email. I'll show you the floor plans I buy. Go find those. If you can find those, those are the ones to buy because those will give you the three L's. The longevity, the livability. If you remember my uh, three L videos, review this video and it will tell you how to pick a unit. Okay? Where was I? Right here. So, here's what I think. I think that Toronto is going to see, and I'm going to give you the exact numbers now, an excellent year in 2019. Now, the prices may not be jumping up as much as we've seen in uh, previous years, like 24% in one year, 10%, probably, 18%, maybe. But if you can pick a unit that does really well, if, if you want to talk to me, and I'll tell you exactly which building and which specific unit in the building I think has the highest chances of appreciating. And these, my friends, in my opinion, can go 15 and 20%, and you will see some units and areas going up by 25%. And for those who buy the crappy units, you're not going to see high gains. You're going to see zero gains, 1 to 2 to 5% gains. Okay? So the idea here is this. Instead of using a blanket statement, so, oh, I want to make 29%, 29.5%, 30% on my Bohemian Embassy, and trust me, my friends, my unit at Bohemian Embassy is one of the best units in the buildings, if not the best one, and I've done phenomenally, phenomenally well on it because I picked the right unit, the right floor, the right, the right, the right uh, direction, the right exposure, and of course, the best floor plan. <coughs> <coughs> now, somebody came to me the other day and said, I said, why'd you buy this unit? It's a crappy unit. Like, I'm sorry I have to tell you this, but, you know, I would never touch it, let alone I would never rent this unit. They go, well, that was the last unit available. Well, why don't you buy it? Just wait for the next building. Ask me. Maybe you can get an assignment. Maybe you can get something better. Maybe you can get um, a unit that is just coming on the market or somebody returned. There's lots of options. Take your time. Talk to the professionals. So, 2019, I'm looking at in and around 10% appreciation with 15 to 20% appreciation on new construction, the good units. Some of them I think will do even more than 10, than 10, 15, and 20. And the crappy units, the bad designs, those are already overpriced, will go by less. Less than 10 and probably less than 5. That is why you need to be more careful than you ever been selecting units. Do you get that? It is not that you know you're buying this building and you're guaranteed appreciation. No. What's going to happen is your neighbor, me and my investors, we're going to pick the best units in the building. I guarantee you we're going to do really really well. But you're going to pick, he's going to look really good on the floor plan but if you not looked at 10,000 floor plans, 100,000 floor plans like I do every day, I look at dozens of them every single day. And, you know, I, I really cringe with most of them. And once in a while, you know, I, I, find, I find a good one. It's a hallelujah. Um, but if, if you pick these units or ask me how to, how to pick them or come with me to the sales center, I'll show you. You know, this will save you thousands and thousands of dollars. And the other thing I got to tell you is... When you go direct to developer, you're probably not going to get the best deal. Even if it's VIP, it's still going to happen. Because you need someone that knows the developer, knows the inside, knows, for example, there's a building here in the area they've been selling, and it's selling really well, and I really like it, it's all good, but some of the units are really, really good. But guess what? They may not be released. They may not be released because the sales team and the developer realize these are the best units, and they're going to leave them for the end when the price is already appreciated by the average of, say, 10%, but they can make 20% on the unit, just like us. But if I came and said, hey, it's Yossi, give me a better unit, they're probably going to release one of these units to me. Not to you, but to me. Not to, you know, I mean, there's hundreds of email lists and, and websites. It's all good. It's all fine. They're all real estate agents. I love them. But do you have the connections? Do you have the ability to design and differentiate? And most important than all, do you really care for your clients or you just want to close another deal, want to close another deal? I mean, it's really easy just to sell people anything. It's so easy, you know. 
But it's not easy to find that good unit, to fight for that good unit, and then to tell the person, this is the unit to buy. And that's what I do, and that's why I take so much care of everything that I do, and that's why I have a great reputation, because that's what I do. So, go in a newsletter here, go on Twitter here, subscribe to the newsletter, follow Twitter, subscribe to my channel, okay, right here, and start to get the news, the information, and I will, and, and communicate with me personally, you know, I'll talk to you, I'll come to meet you, we'll sit over coffee, and we'll, we'll discuss what's going on, and if you bought something you need to sell, we can help you sell it, and get the best price you can in the cheapest way, and the fastest way possible, and at the same time, we'll find the best investment possible. So the last thing I want to show you, my friends, is Brantford, Ontario. I started to work at Brantford, Ontario because it's a great place to invest, and Brantford is one of these places that remind me of Toronto when I came, okay? When I came to Toronto, and it was a quarter century ago, <laughs> and everything was cheap and derelict, and people said the condo's not good, that, that. <sighs> come on. These people are still renting, they're still paying your mortgage, my mortgage. Thank you very much for not believing because you made us rich. But if you want to be rich, you also need to start looking at places where I think it's going to explode. And Brentford is one of them. Right now, we have quite a few assignments in Brentford. We bought our friends and, and myself. We bought really, really good units for really cheap. And we still have them for really amazing prices. Very good, uh, a very good product. 33 Jarvis, phenomenal. 85 Morel, phenomenal. Go to the website, do a little research, take a look. I think you're going to like it because you can still get a townhouse, a townhouse for half a million or a condo in the low 300s. And that's phenomenal because these places are amazing. Okay? And you got to understand, just like I said in my Oshawa video, where is that? This is the Oshawa video. The entire GTA, the entire GTA is our playground. It's no more Toronto. You know, I live here. I work here. Obviously, I walk everywhere. People know me on the street. They stop me, ask me questions at the coffee shop, whatever. But, you know, everywhere in Toronto is legit to look at. And when I say Toronto, I mean from Hamilton to Oshawa. Now, Oshawa is a problem now. Oshawa could be good if you're looking for cheap deals. I think they're going to start coming. Um, but anywhere in the, in the region of the, G, the expanded GTA, it is still gold. Okay, we are growing, Canada is growing, Ontario is growing. I don't care who the prime minister is, I don't care who the politician is, it doesn't matter. These guys come and go. I don't read the papers, I look at the real estate section and I remind myself it's all fake news, but at the same time, I look for the numbers. So, this is the real news right here, and this is the real news right here because no one made it up. This is computer generated, okay, and they have this is it, this is the, the numbers show, and it's, it's very simple stuff. So. That's what I want you to do, my friends, okay? I want you to give me a shout, ask me where should I invest, or did I make a good investment, or should I flip, send me your units, I'll give you a great idea of what it is. And if you're looking for good places to invest, go to my website, because I would not post something I do not believe in. I would only show you the things that I like, and that changes often, because as I find new properties, I post them, okay? I hope it was a good video for you. Um, leave in the comments below. Let me know what you think is a good investment. Let me know what are your worries or how are you expecting the Toronto real estate market to perform in 2019. And do you agree with my analysis that we're looking at, you know, the 0 to 10 for the least performing properties and the 10 to 20 for the highest, higher, highest performing properties? Okay, so that's what I got for today. Take care, my friends. Live long and prosper. You'll see out.